Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's take a closer look at the non-ideal operational amplifier. So here we have a, a picture of what it looks like. Notice we have the inverting and non-inverting input. We have what we call V1, which is the voltage at the inverting input, and V2, the voltage at the non-inverting input. And then the difference between the voltage is called V sub D, the voltage difference, which is simply V2 minus V1. And in that particular order, that's important. Also notice there is a resistance between the, non, the inverting input and the non-inverting input and that resistance is typically quite high. Also notice we have a voltage output here and we have an internal connection to ground which is related to the current flow that's going from the internal operational amplifier to the voltage output and there's a resistance across there which is relatively small in nature. Notice that V1, the voltage at the inverting input, is called the voltage difference between the inverting terminal and ground. So it is the difference between whatever this voltage is set to and ground. And the voltage difference, or V2, the voltage at the non-inverting input, is the difference between V2 and ground as well. So it's typically both of these voltages are referenced to ground. You can see then that the voltage output is equal to the gain, A stands for the gain, times the voltage difference, the difference between these two voltages. Now this is what we call the open loop voltage gain. This is not affected by any external resistance that are being connected to the circuit because then you get what we call a closed loop gain. But the open loop gain is called A and that's determined by the internal workings of the operational amplifier. Notice that the gain of the op amp without any external feedback is what we call the open loop voltage gain. Now, expected ranges of certain values inside the operational amplifier. First of all, the open loop gain is typically 10 to the 5th to 10 to the 8th, so that's a very large gain. And ideally, when we talk about an ideal operational amplifier, it should be infinity. So that's always a very, very large value. Of course, you typically don't get that large value from an operational amplifier. This is just the, what we call the non-ideal operational amplifier. The input resistance over here is typically very large, 10 to the 5th to 10 to the 13th ohms, and ideally you would get infinity there so that there's no current flow at all. For simplicity, we're going to assume that this is a very large resistance, so therefore there's typically no current to be accounted for from the inverting input to the non-inverting input. The out output resistance here on the output voltage is typically very small, anywhere from 10 to 100 ohms, and ideally we would like it to be zero ohms, no resistance whatsoever. And finally, the voltage supply that powers the operational amplifier is typically set to somewhere between 5 and 24 volts. And as you would then realize then that the output voltage cannot exceed the voltage that is supplied by the voltage supplies. So typically the output voltage cannot exceed 5 to 24 volts depending upon what the voltage connection is there. Again, it's, no, it's good to note that the closed loop gain is independent of the open loop gain. So even though you may have a very large open loop gain, once you start connecting resistors externally to control the voltage output relative to the voltage input, such as in a closed loop gain, there will not be an effect of the open loop gain. So it simply will then be restricted by the sizes or the values of the resistors that you use. And we'll see, of course, some examples of that in the coming videos. But here you have a, a better idea of what an operational amplifier looks like internally and how we need to account for those in some cases. Most of the time when we simply connect resistors on the outside and we connect operational amplifiers together, we can ignore most of that and just assume that we have an ideal situation where we think about those values rather than these values here. And that's how it's done.